Evidence from social science research is now in. The traditional intact two-parent family, which has been typical of American culture since the beginning of our nation, but which has been breaking down with alarming frequency in the last 30 years. This breakdown has resulted in tremendous harm to large numbers of children and has dramatically weakened and undermined the social fabric of our society. We're about to explore this body of evidence and compare it with the Bible. Stay with us. Till the good news was written and the full truth revealed That the church might be whole and Christ's fullness made real Our Lord in His wisdom gave men gifts from above The Spirit then taught them the truth in love And now your host for The Truth in Love Dave Miller. Good morning. Welcome to our program. I'm pleased that you've chosen to tune in. You know, since the inception of our country, the United States of America has been a country whose founding fathers recognized the need for God in public life and the need for Bible principles of morality to govern and structure American society. Our Founding Fathers recognized that if our country ever strayed significantly away from these foundational, moral, spiritual, and ethical principles, we would be doomed as a nation. For some 150 years, our society has recognized the importance of what some are calling the traditional family, that is, a husband and a wife who marry for life and raise their children together. Divorce was almost unheard of in this country. When it did occur, it was regarded as deviant behavior. Family disruption in the form of separation, divorce, out of wedlock birth, these were kept to a minimum by strong religious, social, and even legal sanctions. This state of affairs held sway up through the 1940s and 1950s. In fact, disruption of the traditional American family reached an historic low in the 1950s and early 1960s. But then something happened. Beginning in about 1965, the divorce rate increased sharply. By 1974, divorce passed death as the leading cause of family breakup. Now, in our day, half of all marriages end in divorce. Each year, a million children go through divorce or separation, and almost as many more are born out of wedlock. People who remarry after divorce are more likely to break up than couples in first marriages, and the same is true for couples who just live together. Overall, child well-being has declined despite a decrease in the number of children per family, despite an increase in the educational level of parents, and despite historically high levels of public spending. Did you know that teen suicide rate has more than tripled? Juvenile crimes has increased and become more violent. School performance has continued to decline. Sociologists are now recognizing the incredibly adverse and harmful effect these conditions are having upon our country and the home in general and upon children in particular. They are now beginning to realize the relationship between family structure and declining child well-being. In fact, the social arrangement that has proved most successful in ensuring the physical survival and promoting the social development of the child is the family unit of the biological mother and the biological father. But you know, our society as a whole has been very slow to see family disruption as a severe national problem. Why do you suppose that is? I would suggest to you it is because a fundamental shift has occurred in our culture with reference to religious and moral value. Much of our society has jettisoned the Bible as the absolute standard of behavior. 
The Bible is no longer considered to be the authoritative regulator of daily living. Think about it. Many, perhaps most Americans, no longer feel that divorce is even wrong. Whereas the Bible permits divorce on only one grounds, for one reason, sexual unfaithfulness. Read Matthew 19, 3 through 9. And yet our society has no qualms about divorce for incompatibility, uh, irreconcilable differences, and a host of other excuses. Many Americans no longer feel that couples simply living together without marriage is morally wrong, while the Bible teaches otherwise. Read John chapter 4, 16 through 18, and Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. By the mid-1970s, Three-fourths of Americans said that it was not morally wrong for a woman to have a child outside of marriage. We could debate the causes of this basic cultural shifting. I would argue that the influence of evolution and humanism in our educational system, the impact of feminism, uh, the increased participation of women in the workforce, the uh, widespread prosperity that we enjoy in America that causes us to forget God, to indulge ourselves. These are the kinds of factors that have contributed to our moral decline. Hollywood, television, and the cinema have unquestionably glamorized, defended, and promoted divorce, premarital sex, unwed motherhood, abortion, the use of alcohol, filthy language, and many other immoral behaviors. Ironically and tragically, the media is working overtime to discredit the married two-parent family by playing up instances of incest, violence, and abuse. If the family has religious inclinations, they are really depicted as weirdos and deviants. In fact, don't you find it incredibly ironic, even disgusting, that what was once mainstream and normal, the religious church-going two-parent family. That is now being demeaned and ridiculed, while that which was once considered deviant, undesirable, and immoral behavior is paraded before us on TV and in the news as the social norm. And anyone who lifts a finger to speak against immorality is pounced upon and berated as homophobic, prejudiced, judgmental, tradition-bound, and out of date. Sadly, a generation or two have arisen in our country who simply do not hold the values of their parents and grandparents. Sexual fidelity, lifelong marriage, and parenthood are simply not viewed or pursued as worthwhile personal goals. Instead, many are selfishly centering their lives on satisfying their own desires, needs, goals. Children and their needs get in the way of the career goals that parents are literally throwing themselves into. In fact, fewer than half of all adult Americans today regard the idea of sacrifice for others as a positive moral virtue. All of this self-centeredness has had its greatest adverse effect upon the well-being of children. The erosion of basic moral values in exchange for pluralism, the growing tolerance of moral and ethical diversity, the shifting of emphasis to choice, freedom, and self-expression, all of these have taken their toll on the family, especially on the children. The fuller body of empirical research now documents a number of startling conclusions. Let me list some of these for you. Number one, we now know that divorce almost always brings a decline in the standard of living for the mother and children and a dependence on welfare. Children in such single parent homes are far more likely statistically to propagate that same kind of behavior. Number two, children never fully recover from divorce. We now know that's the case. 5, 10, 15 years after a divorce, the children will still suffer from depression, underachievement, and ultimately, 
their own troubled relationships. Number three, young adults from disrupted families are nearly twice as likely as those from intact families to receive psychological help. Number four, children in disrupted families are nearly twice as likely as those in intact families to drop out of high school. And those who remain in school show significant differences in educational attainment from those children who grow up in intact families. Number five, remarriage does not reproduce nor restore the original intact family structure. In fact, the latest research confirms that step parents cannot replace the original home. These findings and many others underscore the importance of both a mother and a father in fostering the emotional well-being of children. But even more far-reaching effects have been documented, effects that impact society at large, far beyond the confines of the family. In fact, authorities are now beginning to admit that a central cause of our most pressing social problems, that is poverty, crime, and school performance, is caused by the breakup of the traditional American family. I repeat, social scientific evidence now shows that the breakdown of the traditional two-parent biological husband-wife family is a major factor contributing to the overall moral, religious, and ethical decline of our country. Folks, the social fabric of American culture is literally ripping apart. One reason why our society is not likely to solve these massive problems is the fact that leftist tendencies which have been operating in our country for the last 30 years has pushed us into value neutrality. The clear-cut restraints and distinctions between right and wrong that were so typical of American culture in the past has been deliberately dismantled by these forces. And in its place, relativism has been substituted. The glorification of the individual has encouraged people to determine for themselves right and wrong. Consequently, Whatever the individual feels is right is sanctioned as right, at least for that individual. The previous understanding which prevailed in our society, that everyone is to be governed by an absolute standard of moral value, appears to have been successfully supplanted. Subjectivity reigns supreme, and God is effectively severed from human culture. Nevertheless, I simply must insist that there is a God who has spoken to us through His written word we call the Bible. In that inspired communication, God has designated the following societal structure. In creating male and female, God intends for one man to marry one woman for life. Read Genesis 2 verse 24 and Matthew chapter 19 verses 4 through 6. That is God's simple will on the matter. In fact, Malachi 2.16 says God hates divorce. The only way He permits divorce is if one marriage partner divorces the other marriage partner for the one reason that that partner has been sexually unfaithful. Upon that basis alone, God allows the innocent partner to put away that unfaithful mate and to form a second marriage. Read carefully Matthew chapter 19, verses 3-9. through 9. So you see, God intended for the husband and wife to live together for life, to produce children who were in turn to receive nurturing and care from their parents in a stable, loving home. Ephesians 6, 1 through 4 indicates that. Colossians 3, 18 through 21. It is in this divinely ordained institution of the home that God intended that children receive the necessary instruction and training to prepare them to be productive, honest, God-fearing, hard-working citizens of their country. The home was in fact designed by God 
to impart to each succeeding generation proper religious, moral, and social principles, which would in turn make the nation strong and virtuous. How simple. I'm telling you the solution to our society's confusion and corruption is that simple. If we could get our families back on track according to God's will, we could get our nation back on track. And you know, it starts with you and it starts with me. I'll be back in just a moment and we will conclude our study and give some final comments. I hope you'll stay with us. What a Are you a New Testament Christian? What I'm asking is, have you obeyed the gospel plan of salvation by believing in Christ, repenting of your sin, confessing Christ with your mouth, and then being immersed, baptized in water in order to have past sins washed away? God's way is really just that simple. The only difficulty is in getting people, human hearts and minds, the human will, to bow submissively before the God of heaven. The Bible also teaches that once you have become a Christian, you must assemble regularly and faithfully with the Lord's church. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. You must live a clean, moral life. You must set an example before the world and before your family of honest Christian living. You must study the Bible consistently and frequently in order to fix God's will in your mind and life. You can do this. We must do this if we expect to survive this life in such a fashion that we avoid hell and enter into heaven. Perhaps you've not lived according to God's will. Perhaps you've not followed what the Bible teaches for the home, the family. You know, all is not lost. One can start at any time and begin to get one's life back into harmony with the will of God. You may have destroyed your home. You may have destroyed a marriage. But that doesn't mean that you cannot bring your life at this moment and at this time back into harmony with the will of God. I, 
I invite you to study carefully what God would have you to do to get your life right. You might want to write us and we'll do our best to, to point you to the scriptures that they might assist you in getting your life right. If we had a significant number of people in this country that would turn from the directions that they have pursued and would get their head and mind back into the Bible, we would see a change in the direction of this country and we would slow the decline that we are seeing take place. Let me take you to a passage of Scripture that I think aptly summarizes many of the thoughts that we've presented today. It's found in Deuteronomy chapter 4, and, and while this text is in the Old Testament and is describing a time period some 3,500 years ago, the basic elements of the instructions that Moses gives to the Jewish nation are instructions that we need to hear today as people who live in this country. Deuteronomy chapter 4, beginning in verse 1, Moses said, Therefore hearken, O Israel, to the statutes and to the judgments which I teach you to do them. He says, don't, in verse 2 he says, don't add to these words and don't take away from these words. That's one of our big problems today. People are not content with the authoritative, inspired, inerrant Word of God. In verse uh, 5, he says, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land which you go in to possess. Keep, therefore, and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who has God so near to them as the Lord our God is in all the things that we call upon Him for? And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day. Only take heed to yourself and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things which your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, but teach them to your sons and your sons' sons. You know, that passage is clear, and it offers simple advice, simple instruction in order to help us out of our problems and our dilemma that we face in this nation. What we need to do is get back to the book. We need to convince our society, we need to convince the American population that God in heaven, and there's only one, the God of heaven, the supreme being of the universe that created everything in the universe, has given us a written revelation found only in the pages of the Bible. And if we could get people to get their hearts and minds back into the book, the Word of God, the Bible, and have them to study carefully and meditate and to instill these principles and these teachings, or as Moses said, these statutes and these judgments, if we could get people to instill these and embed them into our hearts and minds and lives, that will make all the difference in the world. We could turn this nation around. We're also going to have to do what he said at the very end of that reading. We're going to have to teach them to our children and to our grandchildren. We're going to have to propagate these principles like our predecessors did. You know, there was a time when the Bible was read in schools, the public school system across this nation, and that's no longer the case. We have gotten God out of the schools, we have gotten God out of our children's lives, and we are reaping the whirlwind. We are seeing society disintegrate around us. Our only hope is to call people back to the moral values, the spiritual principles, that are found in the Holy Bible. We're going to have another song, and I'll be back in just a moment. I hope that you will stay with us. Be with me, Lord, I cannot live without thee. I dare not try to take one step. 
Thank you for staying tuned. I would like to make all of this material that we've presented today available to you. It's yours free for the asking. We have it in the form of a written transcript or in an audio cassette tape. And all you have to do is write us this week at The Truth in Love, Post Office Box 865, Hearst, Texas, 76053. Let me repeat that address. Write us at The Truth in Love, Post Office Box 865, Hearst, Texas, 76053. Request the free audio cassette tape or the free written transcript. The title of our message today has been God, the Home, and America. Thank you for watching. I hope this encourages you and exhorts you to bring your own life into closer harmony with the will of God who lives in heaven. May God bless you this week. I pray you'll continue to study carefully. Now the full revelation has been given to man. Let us strive for the kingdom by God's clear plan. We must never be swayed by the doctrines of men. Speak the truth in love and grow up unto Him. Speaking the truth. Speaking the truth. Speaking the truth.